place. So it is about two hours after you last saw me, and when you saw me it was 3.30 a.m. So right now it's 5.30 a.m. I haven't had that much sleep, and we're about to head to Mosin's village in about half an hour. But what you've probably noticed about my trip is that I rarely stay in the same place in terms of sleeping over, and this is actually the third house in three nights. And I haven't given you a house tour of any of the others, but I'll give you one of this one, because it just ha so happens to be the chief secretary of Sin's house, and it's quite historic. It was either built in the 18th or 17th century during the British Raj, and I can't remember which ones. And as you probably guessed, by my previous vlogs, whether it's in Brussels, whether it's in London, or whether it's in Pakistan, I do have a small obsession with historic buildings, and I keep showing you guys. I don't know if you guys like it. Let me know in let me know in the comments if you do like it. Just to let you know what's around this area, behind me is the Pearl Continental Hotel, and that's one of the oldest and most established hotels um, in Pakistan. And here you can see the decoration that the Secretary of Sindh has put up for Eid Milad al Nabi, which is basically the birthday of the Prophet, and Pakistanis celebrate that today actually. So I'll hopefully be able to catch a lot of the celebrations when I return from the village in the evening, and I'll be able to show you uh, central Karachi all decked out in lots of lights like this. There'll be fireworks. It's basically like a sort of Christmas, which is which oddly coincides with Christmas. It's just one day before, so. So let us begin the house tour. So this was the balcony, and hopefully you can see some of the views over there. But um, as we go inside, this is the main corridor upstairs. And inside there are the bedrooms. I won't knock and show you who's inside, just in case there is someone inside. But here are just pictures of seeing the lining. Right now this house is going through a bit of redevelopment, because I think um, it was overdue some, and the marble flooring is being removed, etc, etc. And this staircase just seems super old. I'm no expert, trust me, I'm no expert on these buildings, but just the, like, the wood and the make of it, and the really quaint style, is that even a term? But um, it just seems super old. Now we are going down into the main living area, I guess, which is where the family would live. Then we come to the garden. What I really love about Pakistani houses and the landscaping of them is that the gardens are massive. And this one has a little play area in the back just in case the secretary will have children. Um, this is a, a water feature, obviously, right now. You can't have water there because there's a water shortage in Karachi, so it seems a bit insensitive. And this is um, back to the front garden, which I was showing you before. If we come back um, early enough, I'll probably show you this all again in the daylight because right now the sun really hasn't risen and I'm showing you all this in a bit of a dawn setting so hopefully you'll be able to see more of it afterwards but hopefully you got a sense of the house from, from that. I mean, it's a really historic house and this street basically has a bunch of these houses so uh, the chief secretary will live here, then there's one with the military on the other side and then there's one with another government official on the other side so this this parade of houses is really you know it's been here for a long time and i guess it's where a lot of the institutions house their representatives if that's a if that's a good way of putting it but yeah that was the first house that i gave you a tour of that i'm staying at tomorrow i think i'll be at a different house i may do that one again um and i'm really looking forward to going to the village in about 10 minutes I have had a change of clothes so I do not stick out like a sore thumb in interior sin and we are about to start our journey now Mosin is snapchatting his own house for now but yeah we're about to leave imminently so we are in the main living room and this place gives me a sense of history because some of the pieces are, of furniture are over a hundred years old and a lot of meetings have taken place here that you know have a tangible impact on the future of Pakistan, or at least Sindh, at the very least. But this is such a, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I find this, I find this so interesting. Let me show you some of, the, some of the things they have here. So for example, this elephant was apparently a gift from um, a foreign dignitary who was visiting. 
and these peacock feathers also were given to the chief secretary in the first half of the 20th century. So these sort of these sort of things are are pretty cool, in my opinion. I don't know. Tell me if you agree. So this is the breakfast we're having before we leave. Parata roti. So guys, this is our ride to Tanda Alayar, which is the village we are going to. Tando Alayar, pronounce it a bit better. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser. There will be a guard inside, so don't get scared if there's a man with a gun. We haven't gone mad. He's just there, you know, to keep us safe. Because the area we're going to is, you know, a bit notorious for being slightly unsafe. <laughs> so this guy rolls with protection. Which means that we're not in Karachi anymore. Most of are wearing. We are? Okay, I don't know what I'm a talking bit. about. A bit. Oh, we're in Tikharia town. Faria town. Most is wearing his Cindy get up. She's gonna help him sleep on the way. <laughs> So we are in Mohsin's village, Tando El Ayar. It's a, got a population of about 30,000 people. Its infrastructure is pretty good, actually. I'll show you outside in one second. The roads are pretty developed, etc., etc. Um, and this is right now his family home that has been in his family for many generations, the same plot of, the same plot of land. And different houses have obviously been built and erected on the same site. But um, yeah, I'll show you outside now. So guys, this is what a Pakistani village looks like. I'm not sure how typical it is, but this is kind of what I are. This is a shrine to something. Shukriya bhai. And this is just outside his house. Is me kya kya ja raha hai? Is me aise ye jo cheese thi sweetness ke liye. Sweetness ha. Aur ye jo abhi dal raha hai khushbu ke liye. Khushbu acha ha khushbu ke liye. बाकी सारी ये मुख्तलिफ टेस्ट आएंगे टेस्ट के लिए गाइज वॉट यूर सींग बी मेड इज अ पार्ट एंड अपेरेंटली दिस खेला दिस शॉप इज famous in tandwala yeah 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 right right <laughs> so let's try it and the name is mama pan house mama pan okay mama plug mama cheeky plug for it <laughs> mama pan house we have stepped out of the main village for a second because mostly and his family are checking his land i think you guys can see that behind me um so what they really do is just come here two eyes or twice a year and just check that everything's been run properly by the people that they they trust and Right now as you can see behind me that is land that has been burnt and that's for fertility purposes. So what that really means is that the soil when it regrows back or the soil when it refreshes itself is much more fertile and produces crops like this. So I asked him a few questions about what he what he grows and there's sugarcane, there is um uh barley, there is wheat. So a whole host of things and a few fruits as well. So I'll try and show you that as well. While they talk business, I'm gonna stroll down and just get a get a sense of how big or how vast this expanse of land is. It so look behind me as far as you can see that way, and then as far as you can see that way, 
that's all that's being currently audited so Mohsen is making sure that the guy behind me the manager looks after it properly throughout the year and that includes looking after this irrigation channel which has to be maintained because you know rocks and stuff fall in, in between and that impedes the water flowing and of course if crops don't get water they die I've been summoned back it's also quite funny to see how versatile a character Mohsen is, my friend, because in the UK he's, he's doing a corporate job and so obviously he experiences a very different side to life and then as soon as he lands in Karachi or in Pakistan, he's off to inspect this expanse of land. And I think, you know, that diversity of experience is super cool and obviously has contributed to his great personality. Something I haven't shown you guys, which I don't know why I haven't shown you guys, is my, are my shoes. So I am a big fan of these shoes. I wear them as often as I can, whether it's in London <laughs> or in Europe or wherever I am. And they're called Peshawari Chapo. And for some reason, all my friends just dislike the way they look. I have no idea why. I think they're super cool. And so <laughs> I just wear them as often as I can. And that's a really random thing to say in the middle of a field in the middle of interior sin but I just wanted to get it off my chest you know behind me is a house of a farm worker so he works on these fields and he actually lives out here and I want to emphasize to you that we have literally gone about 10 miles out of the village and then we've come about 5 miles inwards from the roadside so he lives literally in the middle of a sugarcane field. And I don't know about you, but I'm petrified about going to Coventry because I'm worried about the Wi-Fi connection. So I have no idea how this guy lives with his family out here and he hasn't gotten access to a shop or anything. But I guess it, this life, sort of life has its own beauty. And yeah. On the way here, when you saw me um, talking about the horticulture center that my grandfather set up, apparently that's now become a university and it's one of the leading universities in Pakistan um, for agricultural research. And obviously, as you can probably guess, Pakistan is a mainly agrarian economy, which means that most of the money in the country comes from its agricultural products, from cotton ranging to sugarcane or whatever. So it's just pretty cool to know, you know, a family member contributed in some way to h helping that or helping that sector grow. But this was a long, long time ago. Uh, I think he set it up in the 1970s. And then he, after that, he left Pakistan um, and lived in the Middle East. But it's nice to see that his, that at least some of his legacy is, um, is, is carrying on. Apparently this well has been here for about 200 years but recently they installed this pipe which is used obviously for irrigation so the water comes up when there is rain and then joins the irrigation channel here and then goes and feeds all the plants with nutritious water when we were planning this trip Mohsen said he had a surprise for me when I would come to his uh, farmland and I didn't know what it was and this is it behind me and it is basically a solar powered mini plant or whatever which is going to drive all the energy needs on his plant uh, in about two years and I think that's pretty cool I mean climate change is something that I care about but this is a this is a really good initiative because Pakistan has no shortage of capacity for hydroelectric power and obviously solar power because the sun is always out so I think it's cool that he's using the initiative or taking the initiative and building this mini power plant on his own farm so guys, we're here at Mohsen's fourth farm. This is the fourth destination. Okay, not his technically, his family's. And we're about to go and see some tomatoes. Urdu loves ki tomato ka? Tomato. Tomato. Acha. So these are the tiny tomato trees. They don't start off red. Ye lal kab hoenge? Lal abhi sardi hai na yaar. Sardi. Hafte das din lag jayenge. Summer mein. Nahi, abhi hafte das din mein. Hafte das din mein acha. Ye tayar honge, fir dusre niklenge. Okay. We'll see you in a few days. 
Behind me is a caravan of goats and that's not something you see every day um, and I've just spotted one really far away and I hope it catches up eventually. I don't know if you guys can see it yet. It is just so tiny, I hope it catches up. I'll, I'll update you on the progress. My bad, it turned out to be a dog. As you can see, my bad. Behind me are a field of mango trees and un I love mangoes, but unfortunately it's not the season. The season is in May. So right now we're just checking if the trees are healthy themselves rather than any actual mangoes growing. That's a shame because I love them so much and I think the Pakistani and Indian ones are super tasty. The story with these two trees behind me, this one and that one, is that they've been struck down with disease and so what the, what the really really clever thing is, is that this irrigation channel has been designed to cordon off the water supply to it so they don't waste resources um, on it because it's not going to produce any mangoes in the near future or ever actually to be honest so they're waiting for the tree to fully die I think and then they are going to remove it and then replace it with another tree, a tree and hopefully a healthier one but so the disease doesn't you know affect other trees as well as not wanting to waste resources they cut off the water supply by building these ch channels around it and I think that's pretty clever I mean it's simple but I don't know I'm, I'm very easily impressed I guess this tree behind me was actually planted on the day of Mohsen's birth so it's now like 22 years old and they call it the Mohsen tree and I find that so funny <laughs> what strikes me about this place is the peacefulness obviously there are acres and acres of land and you can be miles away from the next nearest human but it's really astonishing how it's so quiet amongst the trees and the crops and I don't know I'm enjoying it having lived in London my whole life it's nice it's nice I'll probably get bored of it So we come back in the evening and the whole place has been redone. I don't know why. Why were they waiting for the opportunity of us going? But look, the main corridor upstairs that you, you guys saw has been completely done up. And now there are sofas and everything here. And the third bedroom is ready. So yeah, this is basic. I won't show you the other bedrooms because they're actually bedrooms of people. But this is a guest room, I guess. That's the average size of one, high ceilings, and it's pretty cool. So yeah, I redid the house tour just as I'm about to leave. We are sitting in the back because we are bad boys and having Kashmiri tea. 
and it is pink. It is pink. What goes into Kashmiri tea? Saffron. Saffron. That's what makes it pink. But this is the wedding. It's a huge place, and you saw some of the dances that um, we were sitting in front of. I'll report back later. We are at a place called Chaiwala. You may have seen it in the vlog two days ago. I'm here with most people taking pictures of me vlogging, but I'm here with uh, the people who are at the wedding who are dancing. And we are having a lychee chai. This is actually a Nutella pancake, and we are about to have Nutella Prata. They're making fun of me for not being Pakistani.